Like many people, I spent most of my weekend playing the Division beta. Ubisoft's post-apocalyptic survival RPG is a systems-heavy take on games like DayZ, with a dose of Destiny on the side. The single-player modes shown in the beta were sparse, but definitely evoked the Destiny-esque qualities that the game provides, but the main attraction for many, including myself, was the multiplayer PvP area called the Dark Zone. The Dark Zone acts as the open world PvP element, similar to games like DayZ or other derivatives. However, the Division has many systems layered on top of the core experience, the most prominent of which being the Rogue system. A brief introduction to going rogue, players who attack other non-rogue players quote unquote go rogue. This status also applies to anyone in the rogue's party at the time. Going rogue causes the player to be marked on the map and have their position displayed for everyone nearby. Players can freely kill rogue players without becoming rogues themselves and are granted a bounty upon doing so. Dying as a rogue also increases the amount of XP or currency dropped compared to dying as a real player. This system is the biggest difference between The Division's Dark Zone and other multiplayer survival games, as it puts the usually grey area of cooperation with total strangers into a system with clearly defined rules. The rogue system as it stands in the beta does require some tweaking. I've been caught in pretty odd situations where I accidentally damage a random stranger while assaulting a pack of rogues, only to then become rogue myself to varying ends. And there are a few exploits as to how the system grants a few stray bullets of grace before flipping the switch, but the idea as a whole I feel is a very good thing for the game's future. I remember my first few days of DayZ, back when it was still in its Armor 2 incarnation. Running into other players was stressful, you didn't know what was going to happen, but a lot of the time you would simply find yourself avoiding each other, or even throwing a friendly wave as you moved on. As more and more people started playing however, the general reaction to meeting another player changed. If you had a gun, you shot. If you didn't have a gun, you ran. Kill on sight became such a huge part of the game that servers started popping up offering non-PVP safe zones as well as incentives for cooperation, and game modes such as Wasteland implemented the team system from Armor in its Daisy-esque gameplay. My first few days in the Division beta mirrored the experiences I had in the early days of DayZ and then some. With the overall polish of the product, and the more compact environment in both physical size as well as density of stuff, Interacting with other players became a much more enjoyable and organic experience. I found myself banding together with other players when hunting down rogues, without a second's notice, chatting to squads about where they were headed and what they were working towards, and generally just being an idiot. But this solo experience I had led to some really interesting times in the beta. When tensions run hot and shit hits the fan, being a solo player almost gives you the freedom to slip in and out of situations without having to worry about being picked off especially in the presence of more valuable rogue players. Heck, there's already a group of players organising into a faction of sorts, planning to provide players with protection during extractions as well as hunting down rogue players. These interactions could easily see the Division's Dark Zone become a vibrant and interesting environment, with factions and roaming parties fighting to push their agenda. Being a systems heavy game however, we probably won't see the kind of freedoms that leads to engagements anywhere near the scale of EVE Online's Nullsec for example, but we could get close. Of course, all of this comes from the perspective of someone who was never really much of a bandit player in other survival games to begin with. PvP was always interesting to me, but never as a cold blooded hunter type of character. Who knows, with the way the Division handles what items are dropped on death in the Dark Zone, such that equipped gear isn't lost and rather only the items that you've found in the current session, I might start to dabble a bit more in being a rogue player with the game's release. But what I played this last weekend was a lot of fun, and it definitely got me excited for the full release. Here's to hoping it lives up to what we've seen so far. Hey guys, thanks for watching this episode of The Potato Clinic. would love to hear what you guys think of the Division and the Rogue system in it, and whether you're going to be picking up the game when it comes out, or if you're just going to play the open beta, which I think is next weekend actually. 
Um, so that's kind of exciting. As always, we have more videos like this here on the channel. We have our uh, Subnautica video, as well as a video I did on Blade Symphony, because I like that game, it's good fun. Um, we also have the Art for Artists podcast, which you can check out, which is me and David just talking about stuff. And that's about it. So, hope to see you guys again, and we'll see you in the next one.